Hello and welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. I'm Dan Thomas, joined by Shaq Irslov and Ali Moran, and we welcome for the very first time in our oh. FC studio, Frank LeBeouf is here, World Cup winner, of course, FA Cup winner. Charity Shield as well, you're banging on before we start. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you uh, mentioned that. Uh, three it was uh, three, three nothing. Nothing. I guess Manchester, yeah. Manchester United. Yeah, Partez. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I look forward to more of those stories. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> let's focus on what happened today, shall we, in the Premier League. Manchester City taking on Spurs, of course, a big game for both sides uh, just three days after that extraordinary match in the Champions League. Uh, this one wouldn't provide as many goals, but there were early opportunities for Spurs to take the lead. Uh, Son with a chance, Emerson though making the save. It was more of the same for Manchester City. A mistake passing out of the back by John Stones. Good play by Hume Son. Good save by Ederson. Phil Foden was given a rare start for City and he'd mark it with the opening goal after just five minutes. A nice setup from Aguero there, Frank. Yeah, yes, fantastic assist from Aguero because I think he could have finished the, the action by himself, but he saw his partner and delivered a fantastic header to him. You may have expected them the flood against me to open. Spurs tired after happened midweek, but they continue to create chances. Christian Eriksen here with a chance. Edison with a save. You saw a lot of this from Edison. Very quick off his line, closing his space down. Eriksen just not able to squeeze it by. Now, six minutes later, is this a penalty, Ali? 100% a penalty. He goes through his leg and then onto the ball. It is a penalty, not call. And it's a wrong call by the referee. It was not given. 15 minutes later, Kevin De Bruyne, of course, struggled with injuries early on this season. His chance here goes wide, and he knows straight away something is wrong. Uh, he's forced down with injury. He'd leave the match. Pep Guardiola suggesting that his season could be over. Meanwhile, another chance for Spurs on the counter-attack, falling to Son. But once again, Edison makes the save. That was a fantastic action, but I think it was uh, maybe a handball from Son. Six uh, minutes into the second half, Carl Walker now, is this a handball? No, not for me, it's not. I think mm. this, his arm is in the natural action of running. I I'm not sure what he's supposed to do to get out of the way there. Mm. Dele Alli thinks otherwise, no for me. Uh, late on, Raheem Sterling with a chance. Good save, though, from the keeper to keep it at 1-0. I think Raheem Sterling believes that he has scored, but the trailing leg of Gazaniga keeps it out. 1-0 Manchester City. So it finishes Manchester City 1, Spurs 0. A massive result for City, of course. Four games to go, and they are one point clear of Liverpool at the top of the table. For Spurs, meanwhile, in theory, they could drop as far as sixth if Arsenal, Chelsea and United win over the next couple of days. We'll talk about the top four in a moment and Spurs' chances there. But if we focus on this game, it didn't quite play out as I thought it was going to do, especially when City scored the opening goal. You expected them to capitalise on maybe a tired Spurs, but Spurs really could have got something from this. The only difference between this game and the game in Champions League is the fact that Spurs did not take advantage of the opportunities that they had. That Hume Ming Song and the few chances that he had was not as clean as he was in the midweek. <clears throat> Other than that, the game played itself out similarly as it did in the midweek, where Manchester City, with a lot of the possession, but whenever they lost the ball in a bad area and Spurs went on the attack, there were opportunities there. Because between Americ Laporte and, and John Stones, they had all sorts of difficulties every time that the ball went over their heads. Now they're tracking back. They don't know what to do. And the guy that knows what to do is Hume Ming Song. And he's creating problems. And it seems like every time that he gets on the ball, Manchester City, the stadium, Pep Guardiola, everybody's going, ah! What do we do? <laughs> It just felt like it was all about Ederson making saves. Yeah. Otherwise, it was Manchester City dropping points again. And it was hanging on in the end by Manchester City. Nervous times. But three points is three points, exactly. and they move forward. Yeah, that's the key thing, isn't it? Uh, after all yeah. of this and everything that's happened over the last four days, it's three points. Destiny remains in your hands. Look, may maybe in hindsight you understand the nervousness that Manchester City showed, but I expected more from them. In actual fact, I thought Edison was their best player, uh, and, and Gazaniga didn't have an awful lot to do until right at the very end when finally Leroy Sané is brought on to very good effect yet again. I'm not sure what's happening there between Guardiola and Leroy Sané. I thought the team looked far more effective once, once he was in the park. Um, but I, I, again, for City, as much as you control the ball, as much as you, you have possession, I, I don't think they created anywhere near enough opportunities. And I'm with Ali on this. Despite all we've said about City, at the back, you're still not at all comfortable.
four games to go then. Let's just remind you what they are. Liverpool in action tomorrow against Cardiff for Manchester City, without a doubt. Of those remaining four fixtures, the hardest one is this Wednesday at Old Trafford, taking on Manchester United. And Frank, we saw there in the highlight Kevin De Bruyne coming off injured. He was superb, I thought, midweek against Spurs, one of the key players. Mm -hmm. How much of a loss is he for this side? He's a, he's a key player for, for this team and, uh, and he's going to be missed uh, against Man United because, because of his talent, because of what he can deliver and uh, that the, he sees quicker uh, than, than anybody else. And um, uh, I think Manchester City is not the same team without uh, Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne is one of the, 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 the for me, biggest player in the world uh, and, uh, and shows his talent every time he has uh, the position of the ball. Who have you got, Frank, in this running? Liverpool or City? I have to say that uh, if I uh, uh, allow my heart to speak, I would say Liverpool because Liverpool uh, didn't win anything and uh, Liverpool, it was my club when I was young, when I was watching the English football. How was it? Well, Chelsea wasn't the Chelsea that we know now, you know, yeah. I didn't even know where was Chelsea. So, uh, Let your heart speak then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> I, I, think, I think Liverpool and I... I had to. I had the chance to uh, to work on uh, with ESPN with Kevin Keegan was my uh, was one of my hero and uh, and I was very sad when I saw Steven Gerrard sleeping against uh, Chelsea like three four years ago yeah. and uh, and they lost the, the the title. I think they deserve this season to win the title. Manchester City won a lot. Yeah. Chelsea too. And uh, maybe it's the time for Liverpool to to get something back and, and for the fans because they're absolutely fantastic. Looking at the City-United game, mm. how concerned would you be about how open City were today or how much you give them a pass considering what took place over the last couple of matches? I, 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 they were open midweek, they were open today, and they'll be open against Manchester United. The thing about Manchester City is that if they control the game, if they control their possession, they become less open because even if they have that possession of the ball in the attacking half, then if Manchester United recovers the ball, they still got to go 80 yards to get to their goal. And so the problem with Manchester City over the last couple of games is that they've been losing the ball in their defensive half. So it's Laporte with the, with the turnover. It's John Stones with the turnover. It's yeah. Gundogan with a bad turnover. And then they're coming right after you, and then you have the counterattack opportunities. You do that against Manchester United, I think they're good enough to hurt you. But if you actually have the possession in the attacking half and create chances with that possession, not this sideways, 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 backwards, sideways, sideways, back. If you create your own chances, then Manchester United is going to have their own difficulties defending, and then you pin them back, you force them to react to you. That's what Manchester City need to do. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I think City have a, have a vulner vulnerability to pace, which you saw, uh, especially at home and Son, on the pitch over the last two days. The United of maybe four or five weeks ago can counterattack with pace. They've been flat over recent weeks, but there's certainly the potential there with the likes of Martial and Rashford. Um, at the same time, I don't think that United have anybody on their books that has the passing range of a Christian Eriksen. Christian Eriksen was threading passes today um, in, in a way that suggests exactly why he's so highly thought of. And as much as we've raved or should be raving about Paul Pogba, I don't think he ever had that passing range. If City can somehow avoid those gaps, I think they get to the better of United quite easily. But otherwise, again, as good as they've been, there's an, an, an ease about watching City right now. And of course, it's not only the uh, bragging rights at stake in that match for Manchester United. It's all about trying to finish in the top four. Preceding that, of course, they've got that match against Everton tomorrow. Arsenal and Chelsea are also in action. A reminder. Arsenal at home against Crystal Palace, United away against Everton. Meanwhile, it's Chelsea against Burnley. Frank, do we agree that Spurs are okay? Yeah, they are. They so are. Spurs will be fine with regards to the top four. Mm. No? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. <laughs> of course, it's not going to be easy. And don't forget that they have a semi final of the Champions League. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how mm -hmm. it's going to work, you know, may, will maybe have the consequences of, uh, of it. And, uh, and um, they're going to be focused uh, um, and try to work hard to beat because may, are they the favorites against Ajax? Yeah, yeah. maybe. So they're going to have a big uh, uh, weight on their, on their shoulders. And they might forget about the, the Premier League. So it may be a chance for Chelsea and Arsenal. Because I think it's going to be hard for Man United. Man United uh, plays uh, City and yeah. Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be difficult for them. Uh, and um, But Arsenal is in a good mood as well. Chelsea is in the semi-final as well of the Europa League. So it's going to be a big fight. And saying, we, love the we know League. it's going to be a big fight, Frank. Which two <laughs> are going to be there at the end of the day? Uh, 
I will say Tottenham and Chelsea. Right. Of course. Of course. Or Chelsea <laughs> and Tottenham. <laughs> Shaka? Uh, I'm sticking with Spurs and Arsenal Spurs right will now. be fine, despite the fact they lost the day. I, I, I think they will be, given the number of, of home games they have left and the fact that they've settled into to their new stadium quite, quite well. I, I, I see Spurs finishing in a third. I think the, the big fight comes for fourth place. If, any, if Arsenal away to, to Watford and, and, and Napoli is anything to go by, I think they get the job done. They, of course, still have both Wolves and Leicester away. Uh, they're fighting for, for Europa League places themselves. Um, but I'm leaning... Arsenal just over Chelsea. I don't see Spurs nearly as comfortable as this guy sees no? Spurs. Uh, look, the, they have now an opportunity to do something that I don't think they would have planned for in Champions League. Now they're going to be in a position, and Frank just alluded to it, in which they'll be favorites. And let's just not forget about the history of Spurs when they're favorites, when they're supposed to do well, when the, when the world is expecting you to show up and do a job. They haven't exactly done that in the past consistently. And so, therefore, they're going to focus on Champions League. But in doing that, now you're forgetting about the fact that everybody else is now in a party that you invited them because yeah. of the, the struggles of the last six weeks. Chelsea, Manchester United, Arsenal, they should not be at the same level that Spurs is, but they are. Right. And they have a real opportunity. And Spurs now has to figure out, okay, no Harry Kane, and people are going to say, well, are they better off without Harry Kane? Well, that's stupid. Right. That's well, just... I, I, I didn't say that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that that's, 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 I don't know why you're looking no, at me. Well, we, <laughs> that's idiotic. <laughs> Whoever said that, it's idiotic. And so, because they're going to need that guy to score important goals, and he's not available. Spurs is going to struggle. They'll make it in the end. And, unless they're not the favorites in Champions League. I'm just going to say the opposite of just what I said. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, because they don't have Kane and because Ajax uh, uh, didn't lose against Bayern Munich, uh, won at Real Madrid, won at Juventus, maybe they are the favorites. Yeah, the bookies actually can't Some separate people them. Are they're, they're both favorites. Yeah, so yeah. They, they can't be separated. Meanwhile, I can tell you that Virgil van Dijk is the favorite to win the PFA Player of the Year. Uh, that was after the nominees were announced today. Uh, he, of course, has been a key part of Liverpool's success so far this campaign. But you were saying you didn't really want it seeing go to a defender, Frank. I didn't think that was right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put words in my mouth. What do you think as defender? I'm, I'm completely fond of uh, Mr. Van Dijk. Yeah. And I think he really deserved this season to win the trophy. Even if I'm against, you know, individual trophies in uh, collective sports. I think in, there is no sense at all to, uh, to uh, offer trophies to players uh, in a collective sport, but whatever. I think <laughs> because we have to I have to talk about it. I think uh, he has a fantastic season. He, yep. He's uh, he's been uh, unbeatable. We saw his uh, statistics uh, all during all the the year long, and he's been for me the most consistent player of all the. Nominees. Does it make a difference if Liverpool don't win the title? Though? Well, if he doesn't win the Champions League, he doesn't win the title. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But um, well. Even though. No. Yes. <laughs> Even though. He it, was it. fantastic. No. <laughs> uh, all, I, all I heard from Frank there was that he hates individual awards. Yeah, that's it. That, that's all. That's the, that's, that's, it. that's, that's You uh, wait to uh, our special Ballon d'Or. Oh, <laughs> I, I get crazy. We'll every, you back for that every, one. every year on the October, November, I get crazy. <laughs> because I say, oh, it's the Ballon d'Or. Oh. I don't care. Hey, David Ginnell did a good job presenting it, though. I was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> what a tackle from behind. That's the red card, Mr. Dan. Shaka. Uh, I go Virgil van Dijk. Yeah. I, I just feel, listen, if I'm picking a squad and I get first pick, for everybody on that list, I, I go with Virgil van Dijk first. Van Dijk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the, um, the awards will be announced on April 28th. Uh, just... Let's take it to La Liga at the camp now. Barcelona taking on Real Sociedad. Um, Messi would play, of course he would. Why wouldn't he? Uh, ten minutes to go in the first half. Uh, William Jose with a chance. Ter Stegen, they're making the save. They save the initial, and then now the rebound, you're thinking, OK, Ter Stegen is out of the way, maybe you can tap it in. No, over the goal. It will be a Frenchman, Frank, will it? Hey! Uh, we'll break the deadlock. What do you expect? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Clément Langlais, fantastic season. Uh, put um Titi, I think, on the bench, and uh, he's really a, a fantastic player, and he's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Then in the 62nd minute, Family with a goal to make it 1-1. Yeah, nice little slide rule ball to pick him out. Ter Stegen advancing, tries to close the room down. But wow, I mean, just a little too clever, just lifting it over the outstretched leg. And pretty much from the kickoff, Barca would make it 2-1. Messi into Jordi Alba. 
It's unlikely that Jordi Alba is going to score with his right foot, but man, does he generate some power behind this and accuracy. Good finish by Jordi Alba. 2-1 Barcelona. Barcelona then one step closer to retaining the title. The only team that can mathematically really catch them is Atletico Madrid. They were taking on Eibar. Uh, eight minutes into this one, Angel Correa, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, the shot that he saved. He took his sweet time, allowing the goalkeeper to get set. He made himself big. Correa tries to find that near post, doesn't do enough with lifting the ball. It's a good save. Uh, 11 minutes to go in the game, Diego Godin with a chance. Keeper that makes a great save. Yeah, he's not French, so he doesn't know how to do a header <laughs> like Langley. <laughs> But let's say, let's say it's a very nice save from the goalkeeper because Shaka is next to me. Uh, five minutes to go, though. Thomas Lamar gets the winner. Oh. And it's a nice little ball to pick him out at the far post and having to beat the advance and keep out Lamar does well just to lift it over. So just to confirm, then, it is nine points that separate Barca and Atleti at the top of the table with five matches to go in La Liga. Meanwhile, Juventus taking on a Fiorentina. Juve only had to avoid defeat to confirm once again their status as champions. So six minutes in, it'd be Fiorentina who would take the lead. Milinkovic with the goal. A good defending at the near post. A lot of confusion, a lot of legs, a lot of bodies. And Milinkovic says, you know what? This is a gift. Yeah, I'll tap it in from here. Eight minutes to go, though, in the first half. Juve get the equaliser, Alexandro. Yeah, near post, I, uh, he anticipated and uh, had it very, very well. Goalkeeper was uh, hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes to go then in the first half, Keita with a chance. Just, the bar. just give him room here, Keita, to chance his arm and does show the good effect, but for the second time in this game, hits Woodwork. Eight minutes into the second half, Ronaldo would certainly claim it. It will be an own goal, though, to Pezzella. And what a finish it is by Pezzella. Who's at the near post, defending. He's in the right position. Now you just have to clear it instead. Ah, what a beautiful touch between the legs of the goalkeeper. We're going the wrong way, Pezzella! <laughs> that would be it, then. That would be the goal that would seal the deal as for the eighth consecutive season Juventus are champions of Spain beating Fiorentina by two goals champions to one. of champions of Italy Dan what I say Spain yeah mm -hmm. I got Spain on the brain was about Barcelona a minute ago I can't give up uh, so it means that they have won uh, more consecutive league titles than any other team from those top five European leagues at eight now in a row uh, surpassing that of Lyon back in 2002 to 2008 what was interesting, I thought, guys, when we saw the celebrations after this game, Frank, was the fact that, as a player, can you celebrate it as much despite what happened midweek against Ajax and despite the fact that you've won it seven times before this? Of course not. Of course not. I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a short time between, mm. between that big loss and, uh, and, 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 of course, the title. But the title is so big in Italy that it's like Paris Saint-Germain in France where it's dedicated to them every, every year. But um, for a person like uh, Ronaldo, for example, who want to win the Champions League every year, um, uh, stepping down, you know, l uh, last week, yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a big failure and uh, nothing will compensate that. Does it dilute the celebration? Uh, well, it, it didn't for, for the Juventus fans on, on the day, or, or, or the players for, for that matter. And yes, the Champions League exit would have stung, especially given um, how much Juventus had riding on it. But at the end of the day, your domestic title is your bread and butter. And even for the eighth in a row, I still feel it means an awful lot to, to players and, and especially those fans who've been there for all their lives and have, have kind of lived through the, the ups and downs. You, you take the ups when they come because you know downs are, are going to follow at some point. Yeah, the scary part for Juventus and, and those that are making decisions for Juventus is that they cannot forget that winning a league title is an important thing. Mm -hmm. they, that because you won eight in a row, you take it for granted and you say, you know what, that's just the way it is. We're going to show up, we're going to win. Well, it doesn't quite happen that way. And so you got to appreciate the work of the players out on the field. And you got to appreciate what Massimiliano Allegri also has done for this club. I get the sense that they're almost as if, well, we won, but this is not what we wanted. Yeah, and this big picture, we wanted something else entirely, and maybe Allegri is not the guy, the guy to take us there. And for the outsiders, for those of us looking looking in, we think, oh, hold on a second, you won the title eight times in a row. Maybe that's good. Right. Maybe we can appreciate that, and hopefully you 
Champions League, you take it for what it is. It would be an added bonus, but it cannot be the one single thing that validates you as a club. Just a reminder, ESPN FC with you throughout the week. Be sure to join us uh, every day. And just a reminder, we're with you every day on our YouTube channel as well, answering your questions over on Extra Time. Actually, the end of the program now. However, oh. if you stay tuned, uh, Frank is here to answer some of your questions on Extra Time. Everyone else, I have to say, it gets a little deep. Yes. In Extra Time. Wow. A little bit of psychology it's going feelings. on. Of course, of course. Well, yeah, have yeah. To. A lot of feelings, yeah. <laughs> I know. It's just strange we're doing that on the day that we Craig isn't here. <laughs> I, might, I can't wait. see some tears. Can't wait for this. I, I love my wife. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, yes, well, yes, we, <laughs> we learned there was a little dip in that. Love you, Thanks babe. to Alex and Shrek and Frank. Love you, Shrek for Extra Time. <laughs> Welcome to Extra Time, Frank LeBeouf here. What a moment yeah. for us all. In the flesh. Yep. I, don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. For oh. me, it's every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something I took from uh, David Ginola. Oh, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are very close over <laughs> here. Very close. That's your friend. You, yeah, he played uh, with you. That's right, it's in Newcastle. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Is he an actor now, like yourself? How's he getting on? No, he tried, but he gave up. Oh, uh, nice really? Nice yeah. Nice and uncommon. man. Was yeah. he in any Oscar-winning films like yourself? For me? Yeah. Uh, unless some French uh, movie will go there, we know, but no, 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 no. I'm more on plays. Yeah. So the only thing I could deserve is like a Molière, uh, not an Oscar. But, but you were in the, when, what, the Stephen Hawking one? Were you in that yeah, one? Yeah, but for a minute and a half. So I think, I, I think you don't deserve hey, an Oscar it, for a minute it, and a half. Yeah. Come on. I'd be claiming it, even if I was in wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust any doctor like I trust this doctor, Wait, right? Did yeah. Shaka just say I'd be claiming it even if I was the wheelchair? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just him. <laughs> which takes us nicely to our first question, which is about Shaka and his sense of humor. Well, uh, it says Shaka. Let's go to it. Come on in. Bring it up. We know. It? I'll read it off here. There we go. Okay. Oh, there, there we go. go. Why is Shaka not a comedian? The guy kills me, especially during his power rankings. Well, I have you so, do I take those power rankings very seriously? I think he's maybe suggesting they're a bit of a joke. Those are very serious power rankings. I'll have parable. No. Uh, this is where Shaka lists the top ten teams every yes. week. I know. I know. Most, good. You know why most he's a good... anticipated segment of our week. It's, it's, yes. so, it's so anticipated that he doesn't even know it's coming out. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. That's yeah. A, I know it's uh, coming out. just like to keep you all guessing. I'm sure. <laughs> but he's a good comedian in a way because when he speaks, it's, he's sincere. And you have to be sincere. <laughs> well, that's, that's what thank we you see. very much, Frank. Well, I do appreciate what about some some of his comic your, calf history. Your kind <laughs> words. Yeah. I do appreciate your kind <laughs> words. Go <laughs> listen to them, Frank. No, 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 no. They, 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 they're bitter and jealous. That's, <clears> that's what it is. Especially of the beard. Yeah. It's not a beard. It's coming along well, you know. It's not, it's not a beard. It's not coming along, it's stopped. <laughs> no, it's coming along well. Why, why does it go um, the other way? No, that's, that's, it doesn't you know. connect. It doesn't connect. <laughs> it feeds out. Oh, okay. It's a feed out beard. Frank, who got the better of the three matches between Manchester City and Tottenham? Uh, who's got the better of the three matches? Who's players? No. Who, who, is, who is in balance over those three matches, the better team? City or Spurs? Still City for me, for me, the way they play, the way they... I mean, we've been pretty harsh with um, Guardiola all, all around friend, the world. Your friend, yeah? Didn't you spend a year with him in Qatar? Uh, yes, we, we played against each other, but right. because we were in the same city and we had only one golf course, we were always uh, seeing in the morning, playing golf course with Hierro, uh, Batistua, Batistuta, Guardiola, and the brother, the Dubu brothers as well. So we saw each other, yeah, How every day. How is he in real life? Is he's a intense? very quiet, no, and a quiet and um, well, thoughtful everyone's, everyone's person. Everyone's quiet compared to you, Frank. But like, <laughs> <laughs> well, are you thinking that I'm not thoughtful? <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's a, he's, a, he's a very quiet person. He was really thinking about his future. He was talking about football at the time, where yeah. we were talking mostly about golf, you know, and uh, very focused on what he wanted to achieve. And um, I think it, it changed the world of football. But uh, we were we talk sometimes about him a lot. I mean, we talk a lot, especially this week. And I think. He wants to change, but he wants to change too much to football. And he forgets about the, uh, the basic aspect of football is you have to have a defense as sure. well. You can yeah. attack, but you have to have a defense. You have to secure stuff. Okay, let's move on to the next question. I've pressed this button to see what it is. <laughs> Does Frank see Mourinho as an ideal coach instead of Tuchel at PSG? Oops. Proven Champions mm -hmm. League winner. No, 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 no. I think, I think Mourinho has done his, uh, his time. I think I was very fond of him when he came first time to Chelsea yeah. after what he achieved in Porto. I think he lost something. I remember that uh, all the players, even the substitutes, were saying, we love him. 
we love him. I remember even at Inter, Mater yes. Materazzi crying and everything. Yeah. I think he lost that. Uh, at the point that even the player were almost sure to play started to hate him yeah. at the uh, at Manchester. So he has to lay down. I think he has to think about his uh, his life and if he wants to go back to a big club, maybe Paris, he has to change stuff. But especially the way he wants his team to play. Where do you stand on Tuchel? Do you like him? Do I like Jose? No, Thomas Tuchel. Oh, oh. Uh, Tuchel, sorry, sorry, we say Tuchel. It's why Tuchel. It. Yeah. Um, <laughs> say it right down, will you? Yeah, come on. Come on, that's your, that's your job. That's your job. Be a professional. Yeah. Please. Tuchel is, is a very interesting person. He's the first time that I see a coach who maybe have the power in, inside the dressing room. Really? That's the, the, the thing that I feel, uh, even if it's still difficult in Paris Saint-Germain, uh, because the, the, the president has to go a little bit away from the dressing room. Because players, when they are primed, it's like they go straight to the prison, which is uh, not what you should do when you are a football player. OK, let's get deep now as mm -hmm. a football player. What is the worst part of being a pro footballer? What's the worst part? What's the worst part? Mm -hmm. I guess in pre-season was not fun. No, that wasn't fun. Talking to John Losing, <laughs> losing. <laughs> <to John. laughs> losing and when you're at fault. Been there. The FA Cup final. What? No, but when you are when you are a City player, for a Manchester City player, last uh, last game in the Champions League, yeah, going back to your house, yeah, losing yeah. a game like that, I yeah. tell you, you don't that, sleep. It's a real nightmare. That's a real. That's the worst. Because, especially when it's your fault, if you've made an error. Yeah, yeah, it's you make a, you made like, a mistake. What's the worst oh, error? Like do, that you can't. Uh, an on goal, of course, as a defender, you can make an on goal. We have a goalkeeper. I'm sure, even if he was perfect, he made one mistake in his life, yeah. and he couldn't sleep at all for like two, three nights because yeah. you feel guilty. You because you play a collective sport, you it's like you betrayed your 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 teammates, mm. and uh, you hate that. We all have an ego, sure. and so we want to repair it. But you have to wait for the next game. To do so. What's the worst home goal that you score? Like the one that stands out? Is there something that? Um, I think it was a derby. It was that when I was playing for Strasbourg against Metz, and it was like in a derby, and um, and uh, it was like the, the last goal that we saw when Ronaldo was uh, crossing, like you yep. mentioned, and uh, you try to tackle. You know the guy is behind, so if you don't go, the guy is going to score. So you. You go, but you, you know that you're, you're going to make the mistake. So it's a real nightmare because it's, uh, it gives the breath to the other team and uh, it kills you and you feel bad. But even though you have a lot of lows in the game, you're willing to go through those because the highs are so high. Sure. Yeah. And so you know the lows are happening and, and they feel terrible. But it's because at the end you feel like there is something out there that you can go get. And when you actually get to that point, that's when it's all worth it. I, I, I'm an actor now, and I'm on plays, uh, on, on, on stage uh, a, a lot. And people ask me if it's better to be on stage or mm -hmm. um, what is the, the, the best feeling. What we know in sports, in any sports, is the uncertainty of the sport and the, and the, the result. And uh, we want to know that because we want to be in balance for an hour and a half. We, it's our lives to change uh, the maybe what would be a destiny and uh, and maybe change that what we saw the last game Manchester City uh, Tottenham is the best feeling when you win uh, the best feeling ever so and I think I know that everything that I felt on the on the football the soccer pitch is over sure and we never feel that again but then uh, uh, we're going into like a psychology now but how do you deal with that like knowing you're never going to experience that well, you go, ever you go, again. Well, you go into, the, into a depression after, you, <laughs> after your life, after your football life, and, uh, you, and, you, and you rebound and uh, you try to do your best, you know. But yeah. And then you end up here. Uh, <laughs> I'm still there. I'm still there. You, you, <laughs> no, but... you, know, you know what it was challenging, uh, at least for me, is that when, when you're a player and you go out to training or games or whatever, you put so much of yourself that when you come home, you're just happy to see your family, you're happy to see your kids, your wife. But when, when you don't have that outlet right. and, and that intensity and that adrenaline, and then you show up at home, you're like, I got to take it out on somebody. Right. And, okay. and, 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 and what do I do now? And because uh, you, don't, you don't have an outlet, that natural thing, that, that competition. And so now you find yourself competing with your kids, competing with your wife. It's not healthy. I overcame that. Yeah, I was, I was, this is starting to sound like a confession. I overcame that. 17 years in, baby. I love you, babe. Love you. 17 years in gold. She's not watching you. That's, that's all right. I still love you. I 
I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, some of the thought of Shaka losing sleep. You wouldn't lose sleep over anything, would you, Shaka? Yeah. I, 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 I did that night, that time I made a mistake. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Traveling wasn't fun. You want to talk about no? it? No, it's okay. <laughs> Maybe next extra time. Okay, <laughs> final question now to your present lives. What's the worst part of being a pundit? Uh, I got rid of my worst part. Yeah, Twitter. Twitter? Yeah. So you don't... Yeah. But you're, that... you're not on Twitter, are you? Uh, no, no, no. I tried one month. Right. And I was at to, 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 for example, to say if Paris will win against Marseille. Okay. And <laughs> I, was, I was killed by everybody. Because if you say Paris, Marseille fans are going to kill you. Yep. If you say Marseille, Paris fans are going to kill you. And if it's at the game at Paris, if you say a draw, Paris fans are going to kill you. Right. And after months of being insulted by everybody, I yes. think it's the worst thing ever for me, Twitter. Uh, Craig loves it. <laughs> <laughs> He's so proud of his abuse. Uh, <laughs> like a top ten list. Which then, then again tells you, you exactly. Know, you know Craig really the long <laughs> Longer than us. Sure, I'm you sure. understand. I understand. Uh, that is it. Craig, and you will be here tomorrow with me for the show. Oh, no. I can show you about his, his Twitter. Yep, exactly. <laughs> um, be sure to join us then. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>